hello everyone uh, so this is first lecture uh, in dc dc converter uh, in this lecture i'll discuss about uh, the fundamental concepts of all dc dc converters then uh, some basic uh, analysis of the converters so whatever i will discuss in this lecture actually is applicable to any kind of uh, dc dc converter whether it is buck converter it is boost converter whether it is buck boost converter chuck converter or sepik converter zeta converter or any new topologies so these the uh, fundamentals will remain the same so first question is why we require uh, dc dc converter so uh, we are having uh, voltage at one level and if you want uh, the dc voltage at another level so we require some kind of power processing element so that power processing element could be buck converter or boost converter or buck boost converter or any other dc dc converter okay so for example if we require uh, voltage at 50 volt and the available voltage is 100 volt so for that purpose we can use uh, dc dc buck converter or step down uh, converter okay Similarly, if we have uh, 20 volts, say for example, here and we require 60 volt here, so we require a step up the voltage. So, for that purpose, we can use boost converter. So, basically, DC uh, converter is DC equivalent of an AC transformer. Like in AC transformer, we are having voltage at one level and we require voltage at another level. Okay, so in all DC DC converter, you will see that the efficiency is very high. So input power we can assume to be equal to output power. So uh, input DC voltage and input DC current will be equal to output DC voltage and out DC output DC current. Okay. Or the ratios will be V out upon V in will be equal to I in upon I out. So uh, buck conversion or the voltage conversion actually. Um, we can also step down the voltage by connecting one uh, resistance okay so the current in this uh, circuit you can see that uh, i will be v in upon r1 plus r2 okay uh, so uh, the output voltage will be i into r2 so the output voltage is v in times r2 upon r1 plus r2 okay so by changing this value of the resistance you can uh, change the output voltage but in that case efficiency will be r2 upon r1 plus r2 plus r1 plus r2 or v out upon v in so efficiency you can see if we require output voltage to be for example 13 volt and the input voltage is 39 uh, volt so in that case efficiency will be 1 upon 3 or 33 percent so so in that case actually efficiency will be very poor for a small power application we can accept uh, this much efficiency because their cost will be the main criteria so in this setup actually the cost is very low but for high power applications their losses will be more efficiency efficiency will be poor so this will become unacceptable so for that purpose we require to design efficient dc dc converters so that can uh, be achieved if we are having for example one switch if this switch is turned on and turned off at a fast rate so we can uh, see at the output the average value okay so you can see here if uh, uh, input voltage is 39 volt and we require 13 volt here so for one third of the time period if this switch is turned on then two third period of the time uh, total time period if uh, this switch is turned off so average voltage we will get 39 into 1 upon 3 that is 13 volt but again the uh, main issue is we are having fluctuating dc output voltage so whether it is uh, acceptable or not okay so in some application you will find that uh, this is not acceptable so we require some additional component so we cannot uh, convert uh, dc voltage at one level to another level by simply having a switch okay so we require some additional component so output voltage ripple we can reduce by connecting one capacitor that is in parallel to the load okay uh, and the switch is connected uh, uh, in series with the input voltage but again um, 
the input for example is 39 volt output is 13 volt so again there will be huge current and there will be transient in the switch that could damage the switch okay so for that purpose what we do we can connect one inductor in series with the switch again uh, once the uh, switch is turned on there will be high uh, ldi or dt okay so that may cause the switch to be burn out so to protect that what we do once we are turning it off we require to provide an alternate path to this intern uh, to this inductor current for that purpose we can connect one free willing diode like this okay so once the switch is turned on this is in reverse bias so the circuit will be uh, like that uh, once the switch is turned off so this inductor current should have one alternate path so that alternate path is provided by this free willing diode so that current actually will flow through this and the current through this switch will become zero so this is actually the configuration for dc dc block converter this will have so by designing this inductor and capacitor we can have we can have control over the ripple voltage and ripple currents now so in all dc dc converter you will see that we are having at least one capacitor inductor control switch and diode so these four components are uh, the minimum requirements uh, in some converter you will find two inductor two capacitors are used okay so the basic concept uh, to examine the current passing through the capacitor that is operating in periodic steady state this is important point the governing equation is the current through the capacitor we can write as p dv by dt okay so voltage across capacitor we can write initial voltage plus uh, voltage due to the charge accumulation okay so from if charge accumulation is from t naught to t uh, so that q upon c okay so net charge accumulation we assume to be zero in one time period so this part will become zero in one time period if t is equal to capital t that is one time period then this term must be zero that means initial voltage will be equal to the final voltage in that case okay so the average current through a capacitor operating in periodic steady state is zero this is very very important concept that we will use to analyze any of the dc dc converter whether it is buck converter it is boost converter it is buck boost converter or any types of dc dc converter the average current through a capacitor operating in periodic state is always zero okay now if we consider an inductor so in inductor actually the voltage across inductor is ldi or dt so current we can write initial current plus this current value so in one time period you will find that average value of this uh, the uh, this value will be equal to zero okay so the average voltage across an inductor operating in periodic steady state is zero the average current through capacitor is zero the average voltage across the inductor is zero operating in periodic steady state okay so you can see that this part becomes zero in one time period Similarly, uh, in power electronic circuits, we can also apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law, but we have to apply in average sense. So one on time and one off time will make one time period and we can apply KVL in one time period. So that means we have to apply in one in the average sense. So voltage across uh, in any loop the summation of average voltages will be zero similarly at any node the average current will be zero so in capacitor the uh, voltage cannot change instantaneously because it is having inertia an ideal capacitor with infinite capacitor acts as a constant voltage source such a capacitor cannot be connected in parallel with voltage source or a switch this is very very important in designing any uh, the dc dc converter okay so we cannot connect capacitor in parallel with a switch or in parallel with a voltage source okay similarly inductor uh, inductor tends to keep the current constant an ideal inductor with infinite inductance acts as a constant current source thus an inductor cannot be connected in series with a current source 
or a switch okay otherwise kvl and kcl will be violated in uh, capacitor capacitor actually we cannot connect in parallel with the switch or in parallel with the voltage source similarly inductor we cannot connect in series with the current source or in series with a switch so these are the fundamental rules uh, for designing any dc dc converters that we have to keep in mind so uh, you can see that in every sense uh, the average voltage across this inductor is zero and the average current across this uh, capacitor or uh, through this capacitor is zero okay so to have low ripple voltage actually we can have high value of uh, uh, this capacitor this value also to reduce the ripple current we can have high value of the inductor so if we uh, check for the buck converter operation once the switch is turned on so this will be turned off so the voltage across this inductor if you apply kvl in this loop so the voltage across this inductor in on time will be v in minus v out so on time also we call as dt d is the duty cycle that is t on upon capital t okay so on time upon total time the ratio of these two will be the duty cycle so on time we can write as t on is equal to d times t okay so you can see that for dt second the inductor voltage is v in minus v out that we can write l dil or dt or dil or dt uh, will be equal to v in minus v out upon l okay so the current will have slope v in minus v out upon l in buck converter we know that v in is more than the v out okay so slope is positive in that case whenever current is having positive slope so it will rise linearly with time okay similarly once it is off so that time we will call as 1 minus d times t second okay so this switch is turned on this diode will become uh, forward biased this uh, inductor current will continue to flow uh, through this uh, inductor in that case you, if you apply the kvl in this loop so inductor voltage will be equal to minus v out so again v minus v out is equal to l dil or dt so inductor current will be minus v out upon l so this slope is now negative so the inductor current will fall uh, linearly uh, with time okay so if uh, apply the average voltage across the inductor to be zero so on time the what is the voltage that is uh, you can see v in minus v out multiplied by dt that will be the uh, average voltage so in this you can see that dt times v in minus v out plus 1 minus dt that is off time the voltage across the inductor is minus v out thus this summation will be zero so if we solve that we will get the input and output relationship that is d times v in by changing the dt cycle here you can see that we can regulate this output voltage okay now if we examine the inductor current so you can see that it will rise from some minimum value to some maximum value in on time so it is increasing linearly on in on time because the voltage across the inductor is positive which is v in minus v out upon l okay uh, v in minus v out the voltage is this and the slope is v in minus v out upon l so you can see that this is the positive slope so uh, current will rise linearly with time after uh, on time we are having off time that is 1 minus d times t so in that case the voltage across the inductor is minus v out upon l so slope is negative that means the current will fall linearly with time so you can see that uh, the current at the initial time or the starting time will be equal to the current at the end time or the final time so in one time period you can see the current will return to the same value okay and this uh, minimum and maximum value of the current the difference of these two will be called as ripple current or ripple in the current okay and also if we apply uh, see here if we apply uh, kcl at this node uh, at this capacitor node okay so in that case you can see that uh, uh, the inductor average current 
is equal to the in the uh, capacitor average current and output average current so capacitor average current is always zero so that means inductor average current will be equal to the output current so average of this current will be the i out current okay so so we are having uh, this some analysis these are very very important for any competitive exams so effect of raising and lowering i out while holding v in v out f and l to be constant so we are having five parameters out of five parameters we keep these four constant and we are only changing this value then what will be the effect of the ripple current so you can see here that uh, if you uh, raise output current so this this portion actually will get uh, above uh, upside okay so you will find that delta i will remain constant it is not getting changed okay but if we are uh, lowering i out then in that case the average will comes down and there is more possibility that inductor will become the, the inductor current will become discontinuous so actually uh, the converter operation whether it is in continuous mode of operation or discontinuous mode of operation depends on whether the inductor current is continuous or discontinuous in one time period if the current becomes zero before the uh, next switching cycle starts then in that case the converter is to be said that it is working in uh, discontinuous mode of operation if the current like in the previous case see here the inductor current is not zero before the next switching cycle starts so switching cycle starts here from some positive value then it goes to some higher value then again it returns to that same value the next switching cycle will start so this is the one switching cycle okay so here you can see that the current is not zero if it becomes zero here okay then remains zero till the next switching cycle starts so that case will be called as discontinuous conduction mode okay so basically uh, by changing i out uh, or by changing the load the conduction may be in continuous mode of operation or it could be in discontinuous mode of operation okay so for designing any converter we have to analyze whether we want to design for continuous mode of operation or discontinuous mode of operation similarly out of five parameters if we keep uh, if we change the switching frequency of the uh, power electronic device okay that could be mosfet it could be thyristor it could be igbt so you can see that if we lower the switching frequency so there is more possibility that uh, the current will become discontinuous okay and also you can see that if we lower the f value then there will be more uh, ripple in the uh, inductor current that we will also see in mathematical proofs okay when i will discuss the buck converter then i'll uh, discuss this point similarly if we raise the f value the conduction will be in continuous mode and ripple will be small so a red line you can see that it is having lower ripple than this blue uh, line that's why in the most of the dc dc converters you will find that mosfet is used as a switching device because mosfet is having high switching frequency capabilities while in thyristor it is minimum although the thyristors are having more uh, voltage and current ratings in comparison to mosfet but mosfet having higher switching frequency that's why they are preferred in designing dc dc converters similarly if we are changing l value again you can see that uh, if we decrease the l value then the possibility to operate uh, the converter in discontinuous mode will increase further and also you can see the ripple is higher if we have lower value of inductance okay so red value actually is for higher value of indu inductor okay so you can see that the ripple is uh, lower and also the possibility to operate uh, in discontinuous mode of operation is lower okay now this uh, these are uh, some of the mathematical analysis that is very very important and it will be used many times in dc dc converter analysis okay so i'm discussing uh, the mathematics here in next rest of the lectures i want to discuss 
uh, this much mathematical analysis for the CDC converter uh, okay so uh, you can see that the RMS uh, so basically to design the rating that is the voltage rating and current rating of different component like uh, inductor capacitor diode and control switch we have to analyze the waveform then we have to uh, calculate the average and RMS values to uh, select the ratings of these components so, so for some devices actually we have to calculate the RMS values for some other devices we have to calculate the average value for example those devices which are acting like diode we have to calculate the average uh, values okay whereas for uh, devices which are acting like resistor we have to uh, calculate the RMS value like inductor capacitor and MOSFET MOSFET are also working as a uh, resistive circuit when once it is conducting because of the presence of RDS on that you are well aware of so in most of the cases we will find that the uh, waveforms like uh, sawtooth waveform okay so for that the RMS voltage actually the peak voltage divided by root 3 that will be the RMS voltage so you can calculate root mean square value uh, from this expression okay similarly for uh, these types of waveforms they are all actually rectangular uh, types of waveforms and uh, the RMS value will be always V upon root 3 any of these shapes uh, you will find in DC DC converter then uh, you will uh, directly say that the RMS value will be V upon root 3 so like in previous case the inductor current was uh, having some minimum value then it was going to some maximum value and we are having some average okay so this wave waveform so here you can see that average is uh, i max plus i min divided by t so this waveform we can decompose into a uh, waveform like this which is rising from zero value to some maximum value then again come back to zero value then some maximum value okay uh, plus this i min value so we actually taken out this part this dc part okay so if we sum these two waveforms we will get waveform like this okay so this we call i delta t okay now we can calculate the rms value of uh, these waveforms so every, uh, rms value uh, will be something like this this okay so that is uh, mean we can take as average we have taken square here so root we are not taking this side then we can square the uh, waveform okay so we are squaring this plus this i min plus i delta t if you uh, do these analysis basically uh, on simplification uh, we will get something like this okay so that is average square plus peak value ipp i am telling as delta i okay divided by 12 so average you will find in some converter it is uh, I output like in DC DC buck converter IPP will be delta IL that is ripple in the inductor current divided by 12 so RMS value we can directly find uh, from there okay in some converter actually like in uh, boost converter I average will be equal to I in so depending on what is the average value of the inductor current we can put here then uh, what is the ripple in the current delta IL that we can put here then we can find what is the RMS current uh, of that device okay so uh, this is this is a, just a case where we are having boundary condition so you can see that uh, the inductor current just reaches to zero before next switching cycle starts okay so this is the boundary value of the condition in that case uh, you will find that uh, the inducted RMS value is 2 upon root 3 I out similarly we can find what is the uh, capacitor current and uh, and the capacitor current rating so capacitor you can see that the average is 0 so once I will discuss DC DC buck converter I will discuss these things in detail but you can remember that again we are having this type of uh, waveform so average is 0 here and delta IL uh, we can see here that that is 2 uh, I out square upon 12 so RMS value of the capacitor uh, can be found by using uh, this expression these things I will discuss in detail once I will 
this will be documented so this is the end of this lecture so this is the fundamental uh, concept about any dc dc uh, converter so you must go through these concepts and i will use uh, this basic concept in all uh, the dc dc converter analysis okay there i won't uh, uh, explain that much mathematics but uh, uh, i i will assume that you have gone through this lecture and uh, you know what is average sense of uh, voltage and that is applied in dc dc converter what is the uh, average sense of kcl that we applied at any node okay then how to calculate the uh, ripple voltage and ripple current okay thank you